Hello, welcome back to Let's Play Earthbound. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go into Mount Itoi now and check that all out. I did a bit of uh, leveling actually. I'm sure you can tell my characters are a lot higher level than they were. Um, it's really, really easy to train around here as long as you keep your guard up because a lot of the enemies will use side attacks. Sweet. I mean, it mostly comes down to keeping your guard up for Anna because really she's the only one that has any problems staying alive. Um, everybody else has so much HP, doesn't really matter. They can get hit once or twice. Like I said, you gotta make sure you keep Anna's health up. Other than that, though, they give you quite a bit of experience for each battle you fight, and they're really not that tough, especially if you side block some of them. There's such cool music in here. I should look up a remix. I bet it would sound amazing. Awesome. Ooh, katana. Let's see. Who's carrying it? Ah, uh, yeah. Pretty sure this is for Teddy. Not bad at all. That'll make fights go by a lot faster. Let's see. No, I'm not gonna lie. I did take a peek at the map to see what the most um, straightforward route around here is. I mean, um, basically, there are three main weapons for the characters that are in your party right now, and then there are like two items that are of no consequence. So I just figured I would kind of skip those two items if I don't need to go through that area. But we'll see. I might get lost. Let's see, when I get here... Sometimes being able to walk at angles is a really good thing and sometimes it's not. Iron skillet, huh? That is for Anna. Not that it'll mean I'll actually use her for attacking, but... Wow, yeah, her offense, even with the skillet, is ridiculously low, and so is her fight. I feel like I don't understand why they even bother to give her any kind of weapon. If it does something to her defense or her psi abilities, maybe it'd be a good idea. I feel like that's just kind of a waste. But, it's okay. They, uh, do what they want. It's cool. Well, at least I managed to get out of that. It didn't seem to be going well for a minute there. But, um... I went on ahead and I, uh... was doing a bit of, like, research on this game. Again. Uh, every so often I get a, a thought in my head and I decide to look it up. And, uh, I didn't notice, but... Apparently the release date in Japan was, uh, July 27th of 1989. And I just found it so ironic for me because this is only a day later than I was born. We gotta level up again. Awesome. But yeah, I found it interesting that, like, the day after I was born, this game came out in Japan. I just, it makes me feel like, I don't know, I'm looking at something. It's definitely aged. I guess that's kind of obvious. I mean, looking at it, it's an 8 bit, whatever, but it makes me feel like a hipster, too, and I don't mean to feel that way. 
mean, personally, to me, as someone who is as old as this game is, I think it's kind of cool because it proves just how great a good game is. It doesn't hurt, or, you know, whatever term you want to use. It's not tedious to go back and play something like this. It's actually still fun, and I can't believe I just healed her. That's what I get for talking and doing things at the same time. Um, but it's just amazing because it shows how good the replay value or the story or the mechanics or just the game overall is. It's just, it's that good of a game that you can come back 25 years later and play it and be completely content with it as someone who loves video games. It's great. It just blows my mind the history behind this game to begin with, too. I don't know if you guys have ever watched the, um, gaming history or anything like that on this. There's there's quite a few YouTube groups that do it. But I didn't realize that, uh, at all, like, before I watched any of this stuff, that Shigesato Itoi, the creator, was actually famous for, like, voice acting and singing songwriting at the time that this game was being worked on. Like, it's all his idea. He wrote all of the text himself, and he didn't even know much about programming, but at the same time, he still managed to make a pretty awesome franchise. That was not fun at all. That was scary. Teddy was the only character who could actually do any real damage to it. Nintendo did 15. <laughs> Oof. I hope I don't run into a lot of those. Boy, this music got interesting. Guess like I said, I better keep myself healed up. I haven't actually checked out any of like the map or anything for this area, so this is completely me just wandering around trying to figure out what what's what and where is everything. Whoa. That was a very interesting fight. Pray I have something that can <coughs> Oh thank God. I was worried for Minther. Okay, anyway. I forget what I was even saying at this point. Well, those weren't too bad. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow, we're at level 40. Looks like Nintendo's uh, over the hill. Awesome. Oh yeah, fun fact. Speaking of Shigesato Itoi's beginnings, um, wanting to push this game and have it developed, in a meeting with Miyamoto, he wasn't very interested in the idea. The interesting thing is the reason he wasn't interested was because of the fact that Shigesato Itoi had popularity already in other entertainment industries. He was concerned that the quality of the story was just out to get money and it was kind of low quality. Back in the day, Miyamoto was very concerned with quality and they still are. I mean, he's pushed most games to their maximum potential just because he knew that they could better. Oh, he went down fast. But, uh, that's one reason why he didn't want to develop the game at first. See, we do need to find that pool of water, don't we? Hey, a house! Uh... Cool! Thank you! Nice! I 
got lots of money. The economy this time is the... Uh, I guess... This time frame of the game is just messed up. So, there's supposed to be a lake around here somewhere? I don't know if that's here or, or somewhere further on. So I guess it's probably a little further up, it looks like, because I can't really go more south from this point. At least it doesn't seem that way. Yeah. So let's keep going. This game is so interesting. You know, I found that there's a, a report, uh, well, not a report, like a remake, where they're taking the textures from the original um, Super Nintendo US release, Earthbound, or Mother 2, and then they're making it into Zero, which is awesome because I like the idea. Kind of makes me wish I'd known about it sooner than I could have done my LP with the new graphics. Oh, wait, is this the lake? This has to be it. Well, um, let's see, what did he say? I don't remember what he said now. He said there was a secret here. I guess I can always check that out in a little bit. trying to make sure that I don't miss anything. I'll have to definitely take a look at the, um, at what the guy said in my previous Let's Play And we got another level up. Can't help ourselves. Just so much experience, just don't know what to do with all of it. Pretty interesting. These shrubs are actually in my way. Oh, I thought they were just like patterns on the floor, basically. I wonder why there's so many of them. I guess this mountain's dying or something. kind of funky. I wonder if they're just supposed to be normal boulders or what. Well, that went okay, actually. Cool. Free Psy Stone. Not that I even really use those, but, you know, whatever. So, wait a minute. Yeah, I came from here. Oh god, now I feel dumb. I don't understand, though. I feel like I should be able to, like, do something here. I hope I find out what it is so that in the next video I can do it. <laughs> okay, so that's the, uh, that's the quick way up. I don't know why I didn't just take that, but I guess it's because I didn't know it was there. Guys. I'd like to make some kind of progress before I cut this video. I'm hoping we'll come up upon something pretty soon. Huh. It's a bit of a maze, huh? 
Oh, wow. Uh, so many places to go. Crap. I feel like this is gonna be fun to navigate. <laughs> it's just like fast forward all this stuff. Just like up the speed. I keep thinking there would be something hidden in the rocks, I don't know why. I think it's all the times I've played Zelda. <laughs> Makes me wish I could blow it up. Alright. It's amazing. Teddy's level, like, his progression is so rapid in comparison to any of the other characters I've really had. I mean, you see he surpassed Anna already, and he doesn't even have anywhere near the amount of experience she does. He was made to uh, to grow levels quick. It kind of reminds me of Edge in Final Fantasy IV. You get him towards the end of the game, so his progression is just, like, ridiculously broken. But for good reason, because you need him to catch up to everybody. Oh my god, so many. Wow, another level up. Well, I figure fighting four starmen at once, I'd like to think somebody would level up from that. It's a lot of experience. But you know what I just realized? His attacks aren't so great, so I'm thinking I forgot to equip him with Hank's bat. Yeah, I did. Okay, so we need to... Wait, what? Wow, I didn't realize. It looks like I'm... I'm really running over my normal time frame here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get back down to that house at the beginning at the base of the, uh, the summit here. And, um, I think I'm just gonna go on ahead and do this part next time because, wow, it is just massively, wow, just, you know, way too much, uh, puzzle for the time that I have on my video. I just can't do it right now. So, um, yeah, I'll go on ahead and cut this here and I'll see y'all next week and Hopefully next week we'll have some answers as to what we're doing with that lake because I forget and we'll get up into the mountain. So uh, I'll see y'all next week. Bye.